All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to One Game, One Life. My name is Typo, and this is Crusader Kings 3 Tourism Tournaments Part 81. Sorry about the late release uh, as of the day, well, yesterday as of the time you see this. So, YouTube sometimes yells at me about music, and so I tried to get it together all at the right time and blah, 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 and I was, I was just late. Entirely my fault. Um, I'm glad it got up at like 1 o'clock. I think it was still pretty good. It was like 4 hours late. Not great. <laughs> I'm not gonna say 4 hours late is great, but it, we got it up there. Um, alright. But thank you so much, um, to those of you that pointed out that the video wasn't out yet. It was X-Flame and Surov. X-Flame and Surov, thank you for pointing out that it wasn't out yet. This time I did know, and I was trying to get it out, but... There have been times where I, I messed up, so I'm glad you guys left me a comment just in case. I appreciate it. And then you are so you, Meow, and Mauricio. Thank you for your comments. Alright, so. When I got on, I saw that my I need to start marrying my Terramans away. Um, Amos and Osiris are both pure-blooded men who um, don't have pure-blooded sisters. We, just, we ended up not having many daughters as... Seti and, and Tedesheri, and the and two of the daughters that we did have, one isn't even Seti's kid, so there was almost no chance of getting pure-blooded, and one just got unlucky and didn't get pure-blooded. Isis is definitely his kid. Um, so, we're not going to be able to marry them to them because of, obviously, inbreeding chances. So I looked up pure-blooded, and actually, the royal family in Sardinia e Corsica, Kai Corsica, actually, they had a bunch of daughters that have pure-blooded and no sons. So it actually works out pretty good, to be honest. Okay. Oh, Terramans. <laughs> oh, Terramans. So actually, I'm going to start uh, blending them in a little bit. We'll have Amos marry into Satnesu uh, Meritides. And then we'll make it matrilineal because they're going to own land and Amos won't. And I think that's, you know, fair enough. So we'll do that. And then Osiris will marry Satnesu Irene, who, again, they'll be the one that owns land, so we'll support them. And more pure-blooded children. Getting more in the dynasty, you know what I mean? Isis, however, is <laughs> doesn't have pure-blooded. If we married her to Sand, there's 43%, and marrying her to the Bastard isn't exactly what I had in mind, to be honest. Boy, oh boy. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to do with Isis. It's very tough because she didn't get the um, pure-blooded bonus. 63% there. That's scary. Is there, like, one that's lower? No? 37%? That's still not great, if I'm being real. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit on Isis as an option. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Maybe we can marry her to someone else for uh, an ally. You know what I mean? Do the old-fashioned, marry them to the, to the sun or whatever for allyship. But I don't know. I don't know. But those two marriages will make sense to me. Uh, Ramo. Oh, um, thank you so much, Mauricio, for reminding me about the imprisoned giant kid. About this kid being technically... Ramon's kid. This is Ramon's kid from his uh, little cheating endeavor. That's right, Yoanu. Forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. My, you know my memory is notoriously terrible, but I would like to be able to remember things like that. Ramon! Ramon, you have another kid! Let me know what you want Ptolemy's name to be if you want something different. He is a little inbred. And then Simeon is also inbred. <laughs> But also has killer stats. So if you can get rid of the inbred in the following generation, there's a lot of promise here from your kids. 100%. It's a shame that that inbred thing happened because we didn't even it didn't even say it would be inbred, but oh well. And then Lore... 53 learning. It keeps climbing. Lore keeps making more kids. C crazy. Uh, so this Arma... That's right. So straight was... a. Uh, little bit of a cheat. Uh, 
let me know if you, what you want to name Arma, Lore, and let me know what you want to name Manuel. Uh, he didn't get pure-blooded, but he did get the rest of the crazy stat lines. So there you go. Eastern Roman Empire, Macadons are screwed. We need to declare a war, probably. Grand Tournament in five months. I was thinking about doing Aquitaine. I still might do Aquitaine. We're about to get Navara from our uh, Vassal. These guys right here are just going to take Navara for us, which is pretty cool, to be honest. Manetho is just out here. Aquitaine? I think we do it. I think we just go for it. They're allies with almost nobody. This is going to be our first... And they're not even Carlings. I was about to say this is about to be the first Carling house we take on, but no. It's not even a Carling house. Easy enough. Holy War for Kingdom. Kingdom of Aquitaine. Let's get ourselves into Europe proper. I think it's about time. I think it's about time. I'm going to gather my army here so I don't have to go on boats. And then, here we go. I should have waited 41 more days so that I wouldn't have to wait the 40 days, but whatever. Simonis? Amos said I, my dear grandmother, your grandson Amos and I will be the best couple ever. My grandmother, your grandson Osiris and I will be the best couple ever. Yeah, good for you guys. Excellent. Alright, yeah, it's time we start swinging for the fences here and start really knocking this down. Boy, they really are about to lose it to our vassal. Right here, they're about to finish it up. That's crazy. That is so cool that our vassals are actually doing a lot of work this playthrough. What the? Why would I keep waiting for them to gather if that's basically everybody? Just go. Surf refugees. An influx of serfs has arrived in the Kenbet of Bubastis from the neighboring Kenbet of Farama. They claim to be fleeing from the abuse of rule of my vassal Neset Samuths and they, that they wish to live in my domain instead of his. Interesting. I could see it, I suppose. 79 learning. What? When did that happen? When did he just overtake Pi like that? That's insane. What? Okay. Legally speaking, they're still in bondage to some moose, but if I let them settle my lands, it would be almost impossible for them to prove that they are actually his serfs. Kemet of Rama gains missing serfs for 10 years, and Bubasis gains extra serfs for 10 years. Show my serfs to their new farms. That's crazy. <laughs> when did this guy pop off like this, is what I'm saying. Wow, he's still in good health. That's insane. Oh, he got a good meal. Yeah, that's a random one. Mellowed by seduction attempt. Also weird. 79. How the what the? I guess I won't switch him over for now, but okay. Wow. Insane. Hume falls ill with consumption. At my court? How did that happen? Isolate the capital. Oh my god, dude. If we get consumption, that's, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Uh, dude, what do you mean? You're dismissed. Why are you even here, to be honest? Go. Yeah. Um, was, was he anything? Or he was just a courtier, right? He was just at the court? Yeah, we didn't need him. Isis, cruel and rational. Generous and irrational. Isis is my granddaughter, though. Like, if I can't trust her, even if she's cruel, if I can't trust her, then we were kind of doomed from the start, huh? A commoner from Fahera is no longer my courtier, so I can no longer support his dream to go on an adventure. Oh, I see. What a tragedy. Oh, God. And there's my bad memory striking true. He was a master, too. He might have made something good. That was a waste of 100 gold. I wasn't going to risk him giving us consumption, though. To be honest, I might have still done it. I would have at least thought about it if I'd remembered that. But to be honest, I'm still not sure if I wouldn't have done it. That's it, isn't it? Negative 100? Negative 89? They're coming back? What? Oh, no. Don't let Navara come back. Not like this. Not like this. You were at 99%, guys. Don't lose it now. Y'all were right there. Alright, let's siege up. All that glitters. My spymaster, Seti, appears to me with a wicked grin. 
My lady, this pouch contains a powder most nefarious. If sprinkled on top of something, say a gift for you. It leaves no trace, but will afflict whoever touches it with weakness and ill humors. Oh, well, I would say he deserves a gift. He gains a severe health penalty for seven years, and the murder gains progress. Hmm, he'll have no gold of mine. But thank you, Seti, for the wonderful suggestion. But in roughly five months, he won't be a problem anymore, so... Are they really going to fight back from 99%? Very high flood, hell yeah! There it is! Legendary! I didn't even know we were that close, it just happened because we're getting almost 100 renown a day! The Legendary Terramin Dynasty, this is the highest level of splendor. Children are born with 1,000 prestige, marrying into the dynasty gives 900 prestige, and rulers get a maximum of plus 33 long reign opinion, we did it! We are on par with the Carling Dynasty. We are the two most legendary dynasties in this world by far. The Carlings and the Terramins. And we're about to start intruding on their territory so we can show off once and for all that the Terramin Dynasty means business. It's been 148 years. Didn't even take 150 years for the Terramin Dynasty to go from absolute no-names that nobody knew about to... A legendary dynasty that will go down in the history books forever. Because we're cracked like that. <laughs> I've been saying cracked a lot. I don't know what happened. I'm not even, like, teaching right now. It's the summer vacation. That just seems like something my kids would say. My students. But, I don't know. It, it's, it's sticking with me a little bit. I was playing Elden Ring and said it once. And it just I was just like, oh, that sounded good in my... The way I... I, I don't know. <laughs> Split them in half. There we go. Hit these two. Let's keep it moving. I can't... Oh, no, now Navarra is losing by 92%. Okay. It's a, little, it's a little all over the place. Child of the Flame is now fetid. Only time will tell if Isis can reclaim the title's former standing. Well, I guess... I I guess Isis took over. Uh, that, that actually... I didn't even think about that, but that sounds a little weird out of context, doesn't it? Um... Yeah, the Child of the Flame. It'll it'll get back up to rank 4 glory in no time. And then the Crocodile of Alexandria. Teta Cherry still has a long way to live, so she'll be able to get that up quite a bit. This one is maxed out glory, but, but both of these guys aren't long for this world, I don't think. Maybe. We'll see. We got our family being our knights now. Hostile Army says, what? My grandson my granddaughter Nefatari hovers in limbo between childhood and adulthood. She deserves to know his power. Good. Okay. Um, Nefrikari got consumption. Damn it. It's spreading through our court. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But he's gonna be okay. I mean he's 19. It won't slow it won't slow him down, really. A severe penalty? Because he's only getting one severe penalty. Because he's not a child nor an elderly. And one severe penalty is not going to slow down a young and in their prime Terramin. It's just not going to happen. Still though, I hate that it's around. Because there's a low chance that Meritides catches it the way things are going. Whoops. We're in an army. Oh, we can do a grand tournament right now. Whoops. At some point we took over an army and I, and I missed that. Wow, a lot, of, a lot of people be busy right now. Kyriakos, I guess. Alright, Grand Tournament time. It's time for another wrestling bonus. Um, Yeah, it's time for another wrestling bonus, which will help Merit Meritides live five more years, and we'll be able to get our ninth and tenth tournament win on Meritides, which would be insane. Playing a Grand Tournament in Alexandria. Speaking of, uh, Meow, welcome back from your trip, I suppose. Did you actually go to Alexandria in real life? Because if so, that's incredible, actually. I I almost don't believe you. <laughs> for being honest. Pretty crazy. Um let's have let's do wrestling second, actually. Hold up now. Um just here. Just stop. There we go. Wrestling. Okay, never mind. I see what I did. I see what I did. Uh what do I want to even do here? 
What contest do we want to run first? I know we're doing wrestling, but what else will we do? Could do a horse race, but we just vote on our horse. We're not our we're not the rider for whatever reason. Could do a board game, could do a duel. Meritides isn't as good at dueling anymore, to be honest. We haven't done a recital in a while. What what experience do we need? In Hostile Looter. Just bow. Literally just bow. Oh, we also have the plus 5% now from Monthly Renown? From Horse? That's actually crazy. Alright, so it's easy that we're going to be doing an archery tournament. And then the wrestling. So that we can get that to last as long as possible. Alright. For no cost. Which is insane. Because it's her the first one she's done since we got that Legacy perk. Pretty great. Let's start the Grand Tournament. Go for Triumph, of course. And let's host this thing. You're on course to qualify for the archery contest? I bet we are. Especially since we are usually at war during a grand tournament. Like, a lot of the people that would be able to compete don't show up because they're busy doing a war. So, we kind of set ourselves up for success a little bit by doing that, I realize. But, you know, I'm not going to not do that. That'd be nonsense. If y'all want to see world domination, that means we're doing war all the time. 36 days, okay. April. Demetria, there we go. Grand tournament opening. The, grand, the tournament is at hand at last. Many have flocked to my grounds in Alexandria, eager to prove their worth, or simply enjoy the spectacle. The sun rises higher in the sky and the shadows shorten. If I'm going to compete in the archery contest, I must ensure I will qualify. It will soon begin. And in about a month, we'll go to the temple. A Lordless Warrior by Kunta. No, thank you. Just making sure that's still true. Yeah, okay. We got some land to take over. Aquitaine has called an enemy holy order on us. Lore has learned yet another language. Not surprised that Lore picks up another language for himself. <clears throat> Prabhu is lost against Gamo in the Yangtze Conquest. A cask of wine. Yudes will attend a local celebration in Alexandria, and I happen to know that he is a bit of a wine aficionado. I could lure him into the cellar of my castle for an exclusive tasting, and then make sure that he never walks out again. There it is. This will be easy. This is uh, the first time Meritides is killing someone this way. This used to be Menkare's, one of Menkare's favored methods. Architect, here we go. We got it. Really, the divided attention was better, but we got it. Um... Let's see. Wow, direct vassal opinion plus 10 is not bad. Do we need any more stewardship? I don't know that we do. And if we don't do more stewardship, then what are we doing here? Each alliance grants plus one diplomacy. That's five free diplomacy right there, by the way. We don't need August, no. This is also five free fame, by the way. Post family, flatterer, befriend scheme. Bunch of random skill points, bunch of random skill points. We can do more rit we can do more army stuff, I guess. This would give us control advantages and stuff. I don't really know what, what better to do, to be honest. Okay. Uh sure. Let's go chivalry focus for a bit and get some overseer stat overseer perks. I really am at somewhat of a loss of what to do. Also, it is April 27th. It's definitely time to do our grand tournament stuff. Go to the temple. Oh, we gotta arrest people again? Stop doing that, guys. Stop. Yudes is dead, walled up and soon to be forgotten. May he rest in peace. Damn straight. Kill my granddaughter. Kill my daughter. Yeah, my grand kill my daughter. You had that one coming. Whoa. When did I get this guy as a rival again? Can't even interact with that guy He's so far away. Why is he my rival? The dunged. Ugh. Sami prefers not to dwell on the memory. Everyone else tries to mention the smell. 
Ugh. <laughs> Why? <clears throat> wow, he's he's more settled in. 77% murder chance isn't as high. We can get Seti involved if we need to, and Seti can make the difference. Nicias. 33%. Net control Albi. Duke arrived in Alexandria. Zacharias, Zika okay. People I don't know about. Oops, new competitor that I'll never know about unless he do does really well because I totally goof. Two more Dukes arriving. I can't just go I can't just go there. I can't go there either. We're just kind of stuck here until the siege is done. Damn. Twenty-six days till it begins. We still have time to make two visits. I've kind of slacked a little bit on this one. Hear ye, hear ye. Upon this finest of days, we are blessed with the presence of a true virtuoso. She has vanquished all comers from Ireland to Gathay. It is my honor and privilege to introduce the most skilled, the most splendorous, the best in the world, Simonis. Simonis Argonid is apparently very impressive. Uh, yeah, I don't buy it for a second. But sure. We'll, we'll give her some praise, I guess. That sounds like something Meritides might do. Sorry, who? Yeah, 64 stress because we're humble. Yeah, that's just... Okay, sure. Sure, Meritides, sure. If you say so. Since you're so committed to the humble gig. Holy Order got hired away. Alright, let's hit the capital and the thing next to it. Perfect. That'll give them something to work on while we focus down on the tournament here. Can Meritides win 10 tournament events in a row? I did not click the thing fast enough. I guess we're only visiting two things. The varied crowd of contestants mill about the butts, comparing bows and trading tales of their finest shots. The creak of bows and twang of strings carry far, punctuating the hubbub and smell of resin wafting through the still air. Why don't I remember reading this ever? It seems an unknown commoner called Ararsame has been talk of Alexander since practicing at the butts. My ears prick up as my name is mentioned, drifting across a gentle breeze. That could be a good sign or a bad one. So 15 prowess. Um, he is a higher level bow hostile looter. Xanthos the second. Not impressive. Zacharias. Uh, 23 prowess isn't bad. Elpis. 17 and pregnant. Emmanuel. 24 prowess and one with the bow. Emmanuel is going to be one of the top performers. Sharimpa. Sharimpa. That's Terramin. Yes. 20 prowess, not bad. Towerette. Tullinid. Ugh. These, these Tullinid families always do pretty good, to be honest. I don't know what's up with that. And then Arasume. Okay. All right. Time to show the world my skill. Look at us. That's good! Yes, Meritides is ready for this tournament. Archery Ararsame Hood. The crowd hushes as Ararsame knocks his first arrow. Fascinated to see whether this man is as good as the rumors circulating the tournament ground suggest. Not even the wildest rumors could have lived up to his performance. Like a dance, the man sends each arrow effortlessly into the center of the target, splitting his own shafts and driving the crowd wild. Oh no, he's as good as Robin Hood? Spectacular, I must meet him. What are you- he's that good? What? Damn, this man's intense! I kinda want him now, I must meet him. The attendants I sent to fetch Arsame are confounded when they return. It seems the archer hurriedly left the grounds as soon as his arrows were spent. There's been no sign of him since. What the? He resigned from the archery contest. Was he here to rob somebody? Was he actually playing Robin Hood? What the hell just happened? What? Okay, fine. I guess that's one less competitor. That was weird. The crowd murmurs placidly as Zacharias takes his mark. I fancy I catch a few words on the wind, and clearly so does Zacharias. Oh yeah, it's distracting him. Uh, uh, oh man, uh, ticklish throat. Uh. <laughs> Coming on. Cough, cough. <laughs> that's, so, that's such a poor sport, Meritides. What are you doing? I keep pausing. Come on. 
Show us that we're cooking. Striking true. Dust begins to draw in slowly but steadily as the competition continues. The snapping of strings, a staccato rhythm. I lean on my bow, considering the path this contest has taken so far, such as when another competitor made a scene over the lack of quiet during their turn. Competition begins to draw to a close as arrows continue to fly into and past the butts. If I'm to make any impact any on proceeds from here, I must act now. Yeah, we only have 21 prowess and level 1 and, and hostile looter and bow. So we're not super impressive this time, ar this time around. Oh, with this win, this trajectory should suffice. Come on! Don't lose, Maritini's! Not now! Highly strung. I step forward, knock, aim, draw, and loose. The arrow whistles, whistles through the air, thudding deep into the target. The crowd erupts. There can be no arguments. It is a huge point in my favor. I'm winning. Victory is so close. Only a few more arrows are remaining for each competitor. The end is at hand. One last knock. Yes, we got the 87%. Come on! Come on, Maritini's! Nine wins in a row! Yes! Intent achieved. That's spoiler, spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's go! After many trials, some tribulations, and above all, some truly spirited competition, we have our final three. In third place, the gutsy Duke Za Duke's Zacharias. Coming in a close second, Hatia Elpis. Hey, the Terramin! Let's go! That, of course, leaves us with our victor, Pharaoh Meritides. I knew I could win. I have proven my worthiness beyond doubt. Beautiful. Why not? All right, so we did the thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, let's go to the artisan quarters. What? I find I find Bongo cutting a piece of cloth. A couple of tables have been disposed of disposed of displays work. Stockings and head coverings, hoods and sleeves. Opposite a hearth, slightly burns. Lightly burns. I swear I can read anything in particular the lady is seeking. He folds his arms. The collection next to him is truly more impressive than what I was expecting. Um, uh, my Magnificent Crown could get more prestige. Could I buy that glass orb? Some banners will encourage the audience to cheer for me. Here, keep up the good work. We can improve the crown? For 15 gold? Did we just make that better? Is it point twenty one now? It is! The prestige just jumped up! Wow! That's not a great upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. Sorry, indulgences, I know. You guys are busy. New competitor, Philippe. 20's not bad. From the Carling Dynasty, no less. Wasn't well, that interesting? Huh. We don't have a feud with the Carlings. It, at most, we have a light rivalry because they're the only family that the world would probably put on our level. Which the Terramans would think is ridiculous because the Carlings aren't from the gods, as far as we're aware. But... That's the only reason we would have any sort of light rivalry with them. Mark of Distinction. As the round of renown of my dynasty grows, familiarity with the glorious Terraman sigil spreads too. My family's insignia is now known across the worlds, noted by chancellors, taught to children, and delighting merchants in lands never even set foot in by Sunborn. As it should be. The Terraman dynasty banner becomes illustrious. We're a huge deal! It took less than 150 years for our family to become the maximum kind of deal. King Louis court physician. Ooh, they, they're going to want that. 62% is not a lot. Oh my god, can we chase them down? That battle score would do wonders. Go get them. How's the grand tournament looking? How long do I have till I have to focus up? Two days? Let me focus on this for a second then. Go to the temple, um... I'll go to Tourney Grounds. A strongman show. Lucas. Lively noises make me discover an improvised arena set up by local peasants where two burly wrestlers are putting on a show. They trade blows, weave, duck, and circle each other until one of them makes a daring move. I call this one the flying plow, he screams before lifting his opponent, slamming into the ground, making him yield immediately. Lucas, the charming and magnificent, victorious yet again. <laughs> so relaxing to watch professional techniques. Woo, how exciting. <laughs> I remember the first time we saw this event, I thought it was the funniest thing because it was like a really old dude beating up a really young guy by like aisle driving him WWE style. This time it makes a little more sense, 21 and 17. God, they are 5 and 4 prowess though. They Professional techniques is quite a word for that, Meritides. Quite a word for that. <clears throat> there it is. The Dynasty Legacy. Another Guile perk. Long Reach. Hostile scheme success chance goes up 10% and agent bribery cost goes down half. 
Next time we get that intrigue lifestyle experience is scheme secrecy. <clears throat> Went from 77 to 87. It's pretty good. And then once it's nearing its conclusion, I'll have Seti get involved in um, supporting the schemes. And he'll be able to increase his success chance by 23. Easily getting us there. We can ransom Queen Martina. The Queen? Of Aquitaine? For 100 gold, huh? That's almost all of his gold. And she's not worth any war score. Alright, I'll make that trade. We caught him. Got him. You got got. Uh, not the greatest general. 38 advantage. Whoa, Grandmaster Marin of the Knights Templar. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's crazy. No men at arms, though, and no knights. That's killer for them. That's a wrap. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> Neg 38 advantage or not, you're not coming back from having all levies. 7 to 2162. Lore picks up 11 more kills. Rest in peace, the enemy. 81%, huh? Okay. Um, you guys can go get that. You guys can go get that. Apparently, I can't. Can I siege this up? Like, am I allowed to siege these up? Even though they're owned by somebody else? I can. Oh my god. I didn't see that. <sighs> Too late now. Okay. Whatever. Nine days until it begins. Okay. Let's go to the temple again. <clears throat> Bring me glory, Amun Ra. Alright, wrestling time. Time to get that massive health bo bonus. Meritides, you got this. You got this. The contest begins, and we're up against Xanthos Petabastus, who has 10 prowess and no Ocelooter experience. He's doomed. <clears throat> Arrayed around the sand, shirtless contestants warm up for their bouts as the herald announces the contest commencement. Some of the competitors rub dirt on themselves, others offer oils, all looking for a scant advantage in the coming bouts. Alright, so we have Towerette Hurrigan, of course. Emmanuel? Yeah, he's he's pretty good. Zacharias? He's not bad. Sharanta? Not bad. Jerger? Not bad. Xanthos? Pretty weak. That's my opponent. Elpis? A Terraman who's not bad. Wow! It's actually, this tournament's a little bit stacked. And we're at 18 prowess from old age, so, like, we got a lot to prove right now. Oh, my God. Negative 56 from old age is crazy. We're supposed to have 74 prowess, but we have 18 because we're 81. Oh, Meritides. I'm ready. We got the we got the lucky start. We got the only opponent who's really not that good. Oi, oi, ref! It is with no little relief that I hear the voice of my friend Agni. The blessed distraction causes the arbitrator to march over to the pit wall and my opponent Xanthos to hesitate just a fraction. Enough for the forearm to the face to stun him momentarily. The crowd aren't happy with the gamesmanship and various items begin raining down into the pit. Fruit, vegetables, even a small stool. Indeed said stool lands close enough for me to pick up the referee's turn back as he deals- Oh my god, this- <laughs> You know this underhanded nonsense and over here is Xanthos crunch. It's so stupid. It's just WWE. Absolutely hilarious. <clears throat> I'm winning. I just need to hang on for victory. Ramon created a cadet branch? The House Ibid? Ramon, why would you make a cadet branch? <laughs> liver looks vulnerable. Yeah, liver looks vulnerable. Let's cook him. One opponent down, but that's the only opponent I'm actually pretty confident against. Because Meritides is a little... A little, like... Like, we have equal competition here. Other than the fact that we're level 3 in foot Hostiluder. And hopefully that'll help, but... Man, victory. Moments later, I catch Xanthos off guard. I don't waste the opportunity grabbing him about his waist and throwing him with all my might towards the edges where he sprawls out of the ring. At 81, we're throwing 40-year-old men out of the ring is crazy. That is actually crazy. Sharanta lost... So, Elpis, ah, dang. Alright, fair enough. And then Sharenta got lost as well. A Manuel is still in here. That's a toughie. That's a toughie. He's Herculean and 24 prowess. Ugh. Surprised at 75%, to be honest. The wrestling quarterfinals are over. Pharaoh Meritides of Greater Egypt, Duke Zacharias of Thraxen, 
Watch Duke, Duke Sicarius get third again or something. Jerger and Emmanuel have reached the semifinals. My next battle ha against my fellow contestant Emmanuel. I can do this. All right, Meritides. Let's cook this, man. Uh, hold up. I have a war I'm supposed to be managing, huh? Yeah, Siege was one. I realized that after I got this far. Some more indulgences, of course. I need to find a way to spend this money. I'll buy literally anything. Speaking of I'll buy literally anything. Uh, we don't have hot couture fashion yet. So that'll be something we can spend our money on. Bang. <clears throat> it's just prestige. It's the least important thing, but it's something. Okay, uh, you guys are headed up that way. Back to the tournament. Emmanuel and I are on the ground, straining against each other. An arm hold. This is like this. A wrestling tournament is the only time you get to touch the Pharaoh like this, obviously. Uh, an arm hold pulls me into a disadvantaged position, and suddenly Emmanuel is on top of me and working to secure a victory. Oh, God. A fistful of grime is face close to my hand, so yeah. Throw the dirt in his face. Don't do that because we're humble, or this is not the way to fight. 19% chance we target his legs. It's 81% chance. Of no. I know it's not humble to do this, but Meritides feels the pressure of having to keep a perfect record. Like all pharaohs. So, no. I think she'll just bite the bullet on that one and we'll execute a prisoner. Uh, after it's done. Let's not execute mid-tournament. That's weird. Come on. <clears throat> Crowd base for blood as I stagger forward to confront my opponent again. I cuff away a red rivulet. Music about when I resort to some dirty tricks to succeed. I'm winning, I just need to hang on for victory. And this time it is hanging on, because this guy's got more prowess than we do. Luckily, we have the Asta Looter advantage pretty heavily. That liver looks vulnerable, let's go for it. Yes! Okay. Let's go, Maritides, you're doing it. We're doing it. A hand on the shoulder, a death trip, and an almighty heave. We crash to the floor. All sound is labored, breathing, and farther away the roar of the crowd. I scramble on top of my adversary, straining to press home my advantage. Moments later, I manage to catch Emmanuel off guard. I don't waste the opportunity, grabbing him about his waist and throwing with all my might towards the edge. That is our signature move, is just literally picking him up and throwing him out. A 19-year-old beast like him. 81-year-old Meritides doesn't care. She said, I got this victory. The battle between Zooks, Duke, Zacharias, and Jerjo has been decided. Both contestants make a choice of their skill, but ultimately, Zacharias firmly pinned Jerjo and was declared the winner through to the final. He came in third in the archery tournament, and he's about to be a, a finalist in the wrestling tournament. Good on you, Zacharias. He's deceitful. He might try to cheat. <clears throat> we'll keep that in mind. All right. The wrestling semifinals are over. Again, 24 prowess. More than we have. The Herald booms. Usur Matra Setapenra Meritides of Greater Egypt. And Duke Zacharias of, Thrakes of Thrakesion. I don't know how to say that correctly. Have reached the final. I've reached the final bout. Duke Zacharias is all that stands between me and victory. I can do this. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's show them we're built like that. Befuddling blows. There's nothing like a good wrestle to truly bring the, the senses to life. Everything is sharper, brighter, more distinct in sound and sight and smell. It's enough to make a woman feel superhuman. I don't remember this event, actually. Something new to read. And perhaps depriving one of a sense would do the opposite. I contemptuously weave left to avoid an incoming grapple from Zacharias, and as he recoils, unleash a mighty two-handed clubbing blow to both sides of his head. Oh, maybe we have seen this once before a long time ago. Zacharias bellows in agony, trickles of blood lowing, rolling out of his ears. I remember that detail. This is the second time we've ever done this. It's clear this bout is coming to a quick conclusion, but the wild attempts at a grapple being thrown in my vague direction implies Zacharias is going to get his revenge or be failed trying. Let's make this quick. I think you've had enough, Zacharias. You talk him into succeeding 94%. Or we go for the hostile looter. We don't need hostile looter foot experience. Victor's assured, but a quick end would still be merciful. I think you've had enough, Zacharias. Either way, either 94% we win to default or 5% we get a slight increase. Oh my god, he's totally gonna agree! Meritini's talk him down. He knows he's he's lost it. Contemptuously weaving left. This sounds like she had it easily. I don't know why she had it easily, but Meritini's had this easily. We talked him into conceding. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. That's a wrap. There it is. Ten straight tournaments for Meritides and 16 in a row for the Pharaoh title. That's insane. Trumpets sound. The crowd clamorous competitors begin to assemble. After many trials, some tribulations, and above all else, some truly spirited competition, 
Usur Matra Senapenra, Meritides boot beat Duke Zacharias in the final. Meritides is our winner. Truly, there are none in Greater Egypt that can match my skill. I've proven my worthiness beyond doubt. I won. I actually won. Huge health boost for five years. So we're not losing Meritides in the next five years. Absolutely excellent. I love it. Isocrates converted culture, huh? To Greek? If you had to change to anything, I guess that's one of like probably the third best option, I suppose. At least his his domain will do well because of that. Oh, they won! Let's go! I missed when that finished. Let's go, Manetho. He went and took it. He went and did what he set out to do. Where is the rest of Genoa? Or is that that's it? Okay. He went and took Navara. That's awesome. Well done. Well done. Well done. And while we were gone, we apparently capped off Aquitaine with a siege right here. Oh no, they are upset about that. That's a lot of really good land we just picked up. Uh-oh, enforced demands. To the worthless Usarmatra Setapenra Meritides. May yours be short and miserable. So be it. Yo, Aquitaine is a massive pickup. And while I'm thinking of that, thank you so much to the comment from Mauricio, I believe, that said um, to not forget about my title. True. Let's, um... Empire of Rajasthan, add laws, now that we're not at war. Royal elective, add law. Perfect. That's yet another... Interesting. That's yet another... Negative to our vassal count. Look at that. Uh, Yeah, it's we now have negative 60 from our title laws on our votes. Every time we do royal elective, our powerful vassals like us even less, which is crazy. It's only the powerful vassals that get that minus 15, but... I mean, they're all plus 100 right now. They don't seem to mind. We're good. We're good. Uh, all of our kingdom titles belong to a Terraman. There's no promise that it'll stay that way. I'm going to have to keep my eye on it. But for right now, every single kingdom title belongs to a Terraman, which is the way we want it to be. You know, within our empire. Okay. Aquitaine, dude. This is a hell of a... This is a hell of a territory. Go ahead and usurp it. They're at war still. France is trying to take something? Okay, interesting. I can't take Aquitaine right now, apparently. Uh, That's really awkward because... Giving a duchy is not going to be the same. Who do I give this to? <clears throat> I could give it to Isis and then she could find her own spouse because she doesn't have pure blooded. I'm not going to be able to marry her off. And Isis is never going to get land. This is actually a perfect idea. I'm going to give it to Isis. Here we go. This is actually perfect. It's actually so perfect. Uh, boy, I need to give her a duchy though so that she can at least hand off some land. It's not what I wanted, but it'll work for now. And then we'll give her a kingdom down the down the road. Here you go. All right. We have so much land to give you, Isis. Make us proud. Make us proud. <clears throat> My throat tonight, can you tell? My throat's a mess. I think I might even sound a little off. And I don't... It doesn't feel bad, but I'm just like... It's a little sore? I don't know. I might be recording and talking too much, but I doubt that. I'm a teacher. I talk all day. There you go, Isis. No mark Isis of Aquitaine. Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> man, oh man. Like I said, though, it feels a little sore, but it doesn't hurt, so I don't, I don't know. But that's why I keep clearing my throat, and if I sound weird, that's why. Sorry about that. That's fine. As long as they have most of the money, I just let it go, because we have so much money. I'd, rather, almo I'd almost rather them have the money, because they can make use of it. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. And then right before we pass away, obviously, I'll just get all the payments we can. Seti, have you finished any lifestyle trees yet? It doesn't look like you have. Look at the Spymaster trait. He's right here. <clears throat> He's about to finish that up. Very nice. He must be really spreading out his lifestyle points. Does she have consumption? She does. Still at good health at 47 with consumption. Teddy Sherry's got those crazy bloodshot eyes. Whoa. Whoa. 
Back in good health for the next five years, maybe, because of the accomplished grappler. It won't last forever, but we'll enjoy it while we can. We could take Burgundy next. Hmm. This one's really awkward to take. It's honestly pretty ugly. All of Hispania is, unfortunately. We could take Brittany. It's very clean. We could take the big chunk of France. Also pretty clean. It's got a lot of Burgundy in it, but... Yeah, maybe we do that. Maybe we take out France here. The Empire of Francia is not going to be formed for a while. I don't want to make the Empire of Mali if I don't need to. So I'll keep those three counties away from us. Until we change titles over to Seti. And then that can be Seti's problem. Dude, Tibetan. Big Empire. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Let's do that. Let's keep... Now this time it's going to be Carlings. Yep. Can't avoid us now, Carlings. And look at you declaring wars when you have a new giant enemy next to you. Maybe not your best play. Oh, we got to wait for this tournament to end in like 11 days? Sure. I can do that. The conclusion. The sun comes down on the final day of the tournament. Sorry, I, I, I obsessively click my mouse when I have nothing to do and it keeps getting rid of the thing up top. I find myself ruminating over the results. I had the finest aim of any in the archery, and I was an indomitable opponent and took first place in the wrestling. I fulfilled my goal of winning a contest. What a great occasion. Prize necklace, number of knights plus two is pretty good. That could come in handy. Knight effectiveness plus eight percent. That could come in handy. Some good, some decent trinkets here. Oh my god, we almost maxed out Bo from this event because we get that plus 50% from our dynasty. That's right. <laughs> Look at how much ex trade experience that is. That's insane. We do just a little bit of hunting with a bow, and then boom, level three hunting. That's crazy. It's just money, though, so I don't need it that bad, but it would be cool to maximize every single hostile looter on a character. Perhaps a few words given I'm host. They bring us some acclaim. <clears throat> pretty cool, pretty cool. That grand tournament's over. Finish the grand tournament. Nice. Cobble Scrappler for five years. So when we turn 86, we'll have to start worrying about our health again. But until 86, we're actually doing really solid. Mena, no! I need a new court. I need a new uh, caravan master. Mena passed on. You know, Unikios, the court artificer that absolutely pops off? Yes. Look at that. 27 speed, 17 safety, too. That's pretty good. All right, let's hold court. Let's hit it. Sitting on my throne, I gesture for my guards to open the doors. Single file line, okay. Lore, hey, how's it going? Nesset Lore approaches me. My lady, I come with grave news, really. But with a solution to fix this problem. It's become increasingly clear that the Greeks and Sunborn are becoming more, perhaps even too similar. It's paramount that we show them that it's us Sunborn who are at the forefront of innovation. Lore, I didn't realize you were so passionate about the Sunborn culture. While the cultural acceptance goes down. Oh boy, I'm sorry. It's it's not what we would do because of Humble. And it's not what we would do in general anyway. I'm sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jamila. My lady, I come from the religious community of Dakala in the Kenbet of Tamiathis. Tamiathis. Their wise and pious women have been collecting and preserving the traditional knowledge of mystery culture for centuries. As a sign of our goodwill, I offer you this precious anthology of mystery texts translated into your own language. We hope you'll accept it and gain a new perspective on our people. Your inferior culture is not worthy of being remembered. Oh my god! Imagine doing something that thoughtful and out of your way with nothing, like, required of you. And you show up, you make this whole journey to the throne room to visit the pharaoh. And in the most respectful tone, try to give her something... For free, obviously, to the Pharaoh. A gift to the Pharaoh to, like, celebrate who you are as a person, almost. And then she says, go to jail and give me that. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god, that's crazy. That would be crazy. Stay and teach me more. You gain bilingual readings for ten years. Ten diplo one diplomacy, one learning. That is insane, bro. That is <laughs> all facets of Misery culture. That's... A fair reason no one will think me as a tyrant is insane. I just can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's crazy. 
<clears throat> my lady, I regret to inform you that the religious situation in my lands is out of control. I try to make my subjects see the light of your true faith, but too many of them persist in their wrong beliefs. I beg of you to use your authority and power to help me, my lady, if I may, and interjects my high almoner, Zemraja. Perhaps they can be persuaded by handling generous alms to the right faithfuls. Hmm. Uh. Let's throw money at the problem right now. That'll work. We have plenty of it. I love how Seti is just here, like, it, both assisting us gleefully with his evil zealot personality because he truly believes that until Meritides passes on, she is best for the throne, after all, right? Because he may be evil, but he is zealous. He believes in Amun Ra's words. He supports Amun Ra's words, which is why he won't kill his children because our religion doesn't allow that. Otherwise, he might do that. But he knows, in the back of his mind, this throne is his one day. This ugly-looking throne. Organize some local alms. Dude, Z Seti's gonna be a crazy character to play as. And it's coming up a little bit. It's it's kind of getting a little close. <clears throat> Maybe some Warhammer. Uh, repair that, yeah. Fine sword, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yes, Nuri's Mace, 100% repair that, 100%. Uh, Terraman Saga, don't repair, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 health boost, 100%. All right, good. We're not using the health boost? That's interesting. Uh, wow, we don't need this prize necklace anymore, do we? Prize ring night effectiveness goes up. We don't need that right now. We have some big learning lifestyle experience items, actually. Kind of crazy. Number of knights up. Let's go with the knight effectiveness right now. Yeah, let's put the prize ring on. That'll be all right for right now. And then... We don't... We do have a grand right, actually. Wow. So this is grand tournament? Ah, oh, we can't make it. That's a shame. All right, let's declare war on France. Now we're going big. Now we're doing big wars. They better, uh, the world better start getting ready because there's some scary stuff going down now. They're like, wait a minute. They did what? Egypt just got here. They're doing what? Oh, yeah. Get scared. You should be. Because now that Egypt is here on your border, that means you're not safe anymore. God, our advantage is huge, but so is Ramon's. Grand right. Gotta be the witch leader, of course. Alright, here comes France on their way over. Isolate the capital. Uh, let me see the plague situation. Uh, I think we're good. I think we're okay, to be honest. I think we're good. 1015 AD. Look how slowly time passes when we play this game. It's insane. After Tours and Tournaments came out, the amount of time it takes to play through a year of Crusader Kings 3 just got massively larger. We haven't played a year yet. This whole episode has all taken place, basically, in 1015 AD, 148 years from the game's start. It's about to be a year now, but it's crazy to me that it takes that long for us to play a year. I know that the Grand Tournament really extra slows it down, but I don't know, man. Uh, it was not Hatia Sharbano was hoping to find sp by spying on secret conversations, but discovering the truth about Ailal does not hurt. Perhaps this can help my efforts. Interesting. Uh, sure. We got a blackmail there, I guess. Yes, it's Ramon's illegitimate child out of wedlock. Oh, uh, I could get him out! Judith Zosid's son, Yanu Zosid, is Nesset Ramon's illegitimate child out of wedlock, but it would get Ramon in trouble, wouldn't it? And he has legit he has legit kids now. I just don't know. And he got diligent! Nice! That's an amazing personality trait for your kid, Ramon. Ah, damn it, it's just... Damn it. Damn it. This kid 
they really think he's Terraman. And nobody can prove otherwise. So he's just a problem for... I'm just gonna have to revoke the title from him later. Sure. Oh, so close. There we go. Normal Nile Flood, sure. Okay, these guys are ready to move. Let's get in there. They both have siege weapons. Perfect. Let's get in there. Yeah. Game time, France. Do you have any idea what you're signed up for? Not that you had a choice. It's incredible what the game considers a good vassal compared to what we already have. Because most of the people they send our way saying they're a good vassal, it's like... No. They're not. What are you on about? I now went down to 80. What happened there? Education's at an end. Nefertari's come of age and it's time she left my care. Nice. She became a Midas touched. So we meet again in Nefertari. Wow, she rolled low on her base stewardship, huh? I mean, Midas touched still got her up to 19, but she has higher learning than she does stewardship. Even though she did a stewardship. I We just have high learning in the family, really. <clears throat> I mean, look at Nefertari. I mean, damn. Nefertari and Nefertari can, can get married. True. I should have done a grand wedding. Oh, we're busy in our grand right. Otherwise, we could. Okay, never mind. Hold off on that, then. My spy man is going to be grave news. We do not yet know who's supposed to plan to kill my prisoner, Achilles. <laughs> Are they? Here, I'll do their job for them. Stay out of my court, please. That was already something that Meritides was looking forward to. Don't threaten her with a good time. Don't threaten her with a good time. This murder will happen soon, and then we might have to murder another person. We never know, to be honest. This family just keeps sending people at us. They're not very smart. What is this? Wait, since when are there birds just flying around? There's no plague here? What are these birds doing here? What was that? France just has birds flying around? Have we ever seen birds do that in this game? Just a flock of birds flying around? I don't remember that at all. I mean, I know I have bad memories, so I probably just don't remember it, but... I don't know, guys. That's crazy to me. They're just out like that? That's really cool, actually. Just flocks of birds flying around. Okay. Alright, I need to look at this Jets box. It keeps showing up. Where is it at? In Kubai. Okay. It's down here in Pharaoh's Landing. Not Pharaoh's Landing. In uh, Ein Farah. <clears throat> Hopefully Argonos will be okay. Look at Greater Egypt spread. Nice. Angulum is under siege. Um... We're going to go ahead and boost our chances here by having Seti focus up. Support the scheme, Seti. Bon appetit, Sami. The bird became the last thing Sami ever ate. All seems that none of my agents are under suspicion, which means no one can trace the poison back to me. Must have been something he ate. Thank you, Seti. That's crazy that Seti can just do that. The feud continues with the next kid, all right? Is the heir, is the next heir not a member of Kusair? It's not. This might be the last execution. Boy, that would be great if so. Might be the last one. We'll see. Jack Spox Pox is still spreading. Okay. EB the Witch finishes promote culture task. Yeah, those tasks take a while, don't they? Alright, good. We can do Bubastis next. Work on that. Four years? That's not too bad, to be honest. Faith where? Up here in the corner, maybe? Could work on that, maybe. We already have some Menkarism here. It is spreading on its own. We don't need to spread it, but... Yeah, maybe these areas that have, like, a lot more random sections that need the help. Let's do that. And right in six months. Okay. And then we can declare the Grand Wedding. That'll be good. Good. On to the next. Oh, France. Oh, France. You're not even fighting back. Not even fighting back. 
They know they're doomed. <laughs> Nobody can stand against us. Not until the Mongols show up. And, um... I'm gonna try to stay away from this to let Mongolia kind of build themselves up. Both because, like, this is some of the most least valuable land. Wow, most least. Good English, typo. This is some of the least valuable land in the world. Both development-wise and resource-wise. And it's extremely far from our capital, so it kind of roleplay makes sense to do this last. You know what I mean? And for gameplay, fun-wise, it'll be fun to let the Mongolians build themselves up a bit before they hit us. You know? Could be good. Last playthrough, we made the mistake of taking too much land, and the Mongols really couldn't build themselves up at all. It's a little disappointing. So we'll let them do it this time around. Nokthareb needs a guardian? Seti and Tedashari's kid Nokthareb. Okay. He's a bastard. No. Yeah, he's a bastard they don't know about, right? Herculean, Herculean. Yeah, this this isn't this isn't Seti's kid. Uh we'll just give him some dude, I guess. Oh wait. Stewardship. Almost can do it. There you go. I'm not sending him to university. He doesn't He doesn't know he doesn't deserve it, but he doesn't deserve it. Oxair. All this talk of bastards making me want to watch Game of Thrones. Speaking of Game of Thrones, there's a Game of Thrones, like, a mod for CK3. There's a, there's an Elder Scrolls mod. There's all these cool mods that I definitely want to play. Um, I might just play a modded playthrough next year instead of another one on the normal map like this. This is our third playthrough on the map. I know we haven't done a Mongolian run yet, which I might do. We haven't played an Indian run yet that we might do. I haven't played an Amazonas African tribe thing that I've been trying to do for a while. I haven't played Tall, but nobody wants to watch me play Tall. So there are playthroughs I can still do on this map, and I'll probably include in the vote, but I am looking forward to possibly doing a modded playthrough of, like, Game of Thrones or Elder Scrolls next time around. It just seems like it would, could be a really cool, really cool time, really fun time. Chateau, Chateau Renaud. French is actually my third... That's what... The, my blood is third thickest with French blood, actually. Here we go. A dangerous faction again. It's Aquitaine, isn't it? Aquitaine's upset. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. How long until they're ready to go? A long ass time. 34 months. Hortensia died in my dungeons. Fair enough. Grand Rite should be coming up. And actually, I gotta end this video here because I've actually been going pretty long. Give my throat a rest anyway. Thank you so much for watching me. Enjoy the video. Consider giving it a like. If you really enjoyed it, consider subscribing. But either way, thank you so much for joining me on this journey in CK3. Sheepbox. Uh, not a worry. Okay. Next time, we're going to finish up our war with France. I don't know if it'll be quick. I don't know if it'll be slow, but they have a crazy fort level. So sieging the capital is actually going to be quite an effort. So at least France has that going for them. At least they can fight back a little bit in that way. But yeah, they're pretty doomed. Wow, that wild rohide gives renown. I need to give that to somebody. Okay. Thank you again so much. And I'll see all of you for the rest of War with France and but so many other things. Probably a grand wedding for Nefertari and Nefertari and other things, but so much next time. And the grand right. Dude, this game is just, there's always so much happening all the time. It never stops. And that's part of why it's so good.